Good morning. It's Steve from Hug Stock Market Analysis, and it's Thursday, December 7th, 2023. Um, I want to do a quick little video here at the end of the year, um, just to kind of summarize what's been going on. And what we've been. Um, so let's, let's get right in here and take a look at the, uh, the monthly chart on this. Uh, you know, I've been uh, involved in doing this technical analysis work, uh, focusing on uh, Elliott Wave Theory, and uh, I've been doing this for 14 years, it's back in October uh, 2009. And here on the monthly chart, um, I've shown this before, but I just want to talk about something that's, that's very important. Uh, up here on the the blue, we have the, the 50. A couple years um, ago, I ended up week, in a motor. Sorry, 50 month I moving average, which is you know, and now 48 months is, is four years. So it's like a four-year moving Long average. It's this blue line on the chart here. And, and, and look, Healthcare. after the great financial crisis in Enroll March of 2009, uh, it took a couple years to climb out into 2011. But once we got above the 50 month moving average here in uh, May of 2011. Hey, Look what happened. Gross. Every time the market pulled back, the where did it come? It, come it came down and it tested the 50 month moving average here in 2011, here again in 2016, here again in 2018, and even during the COVID low. Now we did pierce it briefly right here, uh, but we quickly regained it. And then we you know, ramped out of there. And then last year in 2022, what did we do after we ramped up? We went back and we tested the 50 month moving average at this uh, 32.92 and then even this summer we got above it again and uh, yeah after the bounce and then what did we do when this fall when we fell back to the uh, 4104 we came back and we back tested the 50 month moving average and look the slope of the 50 month moving average is positive and we're testing it and holding it that's the definition of a secular bull market. Not cyclical, secular. And secular means over decades, you know, long time bull market. So the great financial crisis was the end of the super cycle wave four, okay? And in Elliott wave theory, super cycles last for decades, multiple decades. So when we bottomed at uh, the devil's number, almost 666, 667 in March of 2009, at the Super Cycle 4 low, we're looking at decades worth of Super Cycle 5 move higher, okay? Not 14 years, we're only 14 years in. <laughs> uh, we got a long way to go, okay? It'll probably outlive me, yeah, I'm 57. So, um, the cycle one of Super Cycle 5 high, I've got uh, in 2018. And then the COVID low was the cycle two low. Okay? And so that was kind of a flat where it went up, down, up, down. And that's kind of a fat flat or expanded flat where the market basically traded sideways for about uh, two years. Okay? And there were some large gyrations in here. Obviously, the COVID spike lower was a big uh, drop. And then that December of 2018 drop was a big drop. But in the end, that cycle two wave ended at 21.92 in March of 2020, the COVID low. So now we're in cycle three, okay? Cycle three of Super Cycle 5. Cycle three of Super Cycle 5 is going to last decades, okay? Um, so, you know, right now I have it kind of projected on this chart from 2020 all the way out to 2035. Okay, that's conservative. That's a decade and a half. It certainly can last longer than that. Cycle one lasted about a decade, right? From 2009 to 2018. Typically, you got a 1.62 Fibonacci expansion from cycle one to cycle two. So that's what I'm kind of showing here. If, if cycle one was a decade, then cycle two should be, which is 10 years, cycle two, or sorry, cycle three should be 1.62 times that, which would be a uh, conservative estimate of 16 years. Well, that's what I'm showing here. That's this time estimate out here, uh, this yellow vertical line versus the cycle two low. So the cycle three shouldn't top out till 2035, 2036, okay? We're just in 2020. We're only um, a couple years into cycle three. Okay. And so we've already had the first primary wave of cycle three. That was the peak in January of 2022 at uh, uh, 48.19. We had the 
primary two-way and a 50% Fibonacci retracement. It's very typical of cycle two, or wave twos. So the primary two-wave cycled down here to 34.92, which is right at the 50% Fib here of price of 35.05. Also the 50% Fib of time, which was October 2022. So last year, when we got down 50% retrace of this primary one wave, you know, it was the perfect 50% uh, Fib in price and time. It was a buying opportunity. What else did it hit? It hit the 50-month moving average. I mean, what more could you want? You had a confluence of two Fibonacci's and uh, a, a long-term moving average. So it was a huge buying opportunity. People who follow me, we're, we were watching for that. We were looking for that. It could also have gone down to 62% Fib, a little lower. You know, but it didn't. It stopped at 50, and that's 50 is one of the areas you always look at uh, as a first retracement target area for a wave. Two. Sure enough, that's what happened. So then we got a major one wave first out of there into the summer of this year. Got up to 4607. Okay, um, almost made a new high, but didn't. Okay. So then what happened after major one? We we're looking for a major two, which is another 50% pullback, potentially. You know, Fibonacci retracement of 50%. Guess what? It did. It went down to 4104, just above the 50% Fib of 4049. And it also came back near the rising 50-month moving average and held. So now what do we got? The, that was the end of October of 2023. And it burst out of there in November. We got a huge move out of there that's this monthly spike right here and that uh, was about a 10 percent gain over like only a couple weeks okay and now we've been consolidating since but what did this form it formed a beautiful cuff from the primary one high in january 2022 at uh 48 to the summer of uh 2023 at 4607 formed a beautiful cup and what did this little pullback this major two pullback it formed a handle so we have a cup and handle. Where is that cup and handle project to? It projects all the way up here to 5722. Okay, probably out a couple of years. That's also very uh, much in agreement with the major three wave target, which is a 1.62 Fibonacci expansion of the major one wave. And that comes in at 5855. So there you go. Very simple things. Chart pattern, cup and handle. Fibonacci expansion of the major one wave, they agree, they come in around 5,800. It'll probably be a couple years before we hit that. And right now, we're just in the minor one wave of this major three, so we're just targeting probably the old high of 48.19 by like February, March. We'll get a little pullback for minor two, and then first higher minor three, minor four, and that'll get us to the major three, uh, primary three of cycle three, of super cycle five. That's all I kind of want to talk about today. Just the big picture. It's all working out. We're in a very expansionary time in the market ever since the financial crisis low. Uh, the bears, every time we get one of these pullbacks, they're all clamoring. Oh, we're going lower. We're going so much lower. The whole economy is about to fall apart. The world's about to fall apart. Don't listen to them, okay? Look objectively at the chart. You can very easily see from this chart, even if you know nothing about Elliott Wave Theory, nothing about Fibonacci retracements or Fibonacci expansions. Um, you can just look at the 50 month moving average and see that we're in an uptrend and see that we're in an uh, expansion of the bull market. Uh, I really hope, uh, I mean that's, okay, I'll just say one other thing. So this is all in a monthly chart. I, I rarely talk about the monthly chart on my daily analysis here at Punk Stock Market Analysis. I always like to present it to the bigger picture audience, uh, which is going out to everybody. Uh, I mean, what I do here is I look at the hourly charts. I mean, look at the detail that I have here on my hourly chart. I'm showing every little wave, every little trend line. Um, the people that follow the wave theory know what I'm doing here with these very small minute degree waves, sub minute degree waves, minute waves. I mean, very small stuff, uh, even down to the 15 minute chart level. So if you want a day trade, you want a weekly swing trade, I've got you know, those kinds of numbers here for you, what we're looking for when pullbacks happen, you know, where where they might hold, where they might go to. Uh, there's always typically a little alternate count showing, oh, if it breaks here, they could go a little lower here, or if it breaks there, they could go a little higher here. Uh, it's good to have alternate counts. You, you, no one's 100% right. It's all about probability, right? So when I present this to my customers who subscribe, uh, they always know, you know, if we break a certain level, like in this case, uh, 
4537, then we're probably going lower to maybe 40, 4500 area, uh, maybe a little lower than that. But there's always uh, shown clearly what levels are key. If we hold those, we're going higher. If we break those, we might be going a little lower. But um, the, the primary count, which is white and green on my charts, is always the higher probability. The, the chart that I trade, the, I mean the count that I trade, the count that I'm looking you know, okay. to play out. Uh, but we have to have an alternate count. You can't be 100% certain. You have to look for things. If it goes the wrong way, you get out of the trade, and maybe you buy in again at the alternate count. Ice machine. Uh, my, my service is very cheap. I charge a, roughly a dollar a day. A uh, dollar is most is two dollars a day, depending on you know what time frame you buy the service over, whether it's monthly, Cartoons quarterly, or annually. I only offer annual subscriptions uh, once a year, and that's in December. And that's when you get the best deal. You buy for the whole year, you get a lower monthly rate. You know, uh, you can buy it quarterly, you can buy it monthly, you'll pay a little more. But it's dollar, two dollars a day. It's very low. Uh, you trade your own money. I show you the charts. You decide what to do with the data. I'm, prov I'm providing you data. You know, I'm not, there's no 100% certainty in this game. You look at the data, you make the decision on how to trade your account. Um, I'm a basically a data provider. And, you know, I'll just show here is my blog. Um, you can go to my blog, which is uh, PUGSMA.com. So it stands for PUG Stock Market Analysis. And, uh, uh, people wonder what the pug was from. It's not anything to do with dogs. Uh, it was a name that stuck with me. I'm a Purdue alumni. Uh, my wife is a Purdue alumni. I'm a proud engineer uh, from Purdue University back in the 1980s. I worked as an engineer for 20, 25 years, uh, 27 years actually. Um, uh, and uh, the P stands for Purdue and the U is University, and the G is Gridiron. I used to be a huge uh, football fan. I still am a huge college football fan, and I, I ran a blog associated with uh, Purdue football back in the, the 90s. And Drew Brees was there, and Hayden uh, and the Rose Bowl and such. So I, part Purdue, P Pug is Purdue University Gridiron, and it, it had to do with the blog that I created. So I just carried it on when I started my uh, technical analysis business. So it sounds a little odd. But that's a little bit about me. This is my blog. If you want to buy a subscription, you know, for next year, you go to the shop category up here and you, and you pay for a subscription. Uh, again, you can do monthly. You can do the full year, which is your best deal, or you can buy just the first quarter, which is I do quarters, which is like January to March, uh, April, May, June, and so forth and so on. There's four quarters, obviously, in a year. You can buy it quarterly, pay a little higher rate. Buy it monthly, obviously, it's a little more expensive, but. Hey, December is the time to buy. You buy in December, you get the entire year. Uh, you get the rest of this year for free if, if you're a new subscriber. Uh, and you get the whole year at a, at a great discount. And most people stick with me. Like, I have people who have been here 14 years, 12 years, okay? Uh, 10 years, whatever. They get it, okay? They see the big picture. They understand me. You come for a month, you may be like, what the hell is this guy talking about? You know, things didn't go right this month. The alternate count kept playing out. Okay, give it some time. It's not a monthly thing, okay? Stock market is a, uh, a very dynamic thing. Uh, we don't talk about news. We don't talk about politics. We only talk about the charts and the charts in front of us and what the price is doing. And that's all I do, okay? We don't talk about other people's analysis. I focus on my analysis. You want to comment about my analysis? Comment. I don't really focus on other people. I stay laser focused on what I see, what I do. The people that follow me love it. They get it. You can just follow me on Twitter for free. I've got like a thousand followers on uh, Punk Stock Market on Twitter. I'm oh, sorry, 7,000 followers there. Uh, a lot of them are free. I, I do put free stuff out there. Uh, I like to share. And uh, But if you want to see the day-to-day -day work at the very small level, 15 to minute chart, join, join the service. That's my pitch. Uh, I'll stop right there. Um, I hope everyone has had a great, uh, great 2023. I hope you have a prosperous 2024 with health and family and everything. Family is important. I'm an exerciser. Like I'm a cyclist. I get out and bike 30, 40 miles a day. Uh, I bike like 7,000 miles this year. I, I love the bike. Uh, it's my. I get away from the market. Maybe I look at the market in the morning, go cycle for three or four hours, come back. Obviously, wrap up in the evening. I'm also a big music fan. I got I got the National, one of my favorite all bands, uh, indie bands playing here in the background. They're a great band. Go out and see live music. I'm big pitch for that too. Thankfully, COVID's over and we can all get out and enjoy music. But um, uh, again, um, signing off here. 
uh, thank you for being a follower if you're just a follower on Twitter. Thank you for being a subscriber if you're paying for the service. Uh, I wish you the best, and uh, uh, that's it. Have a good uh, rest of your day and uh, into the weekend. Bye now.